It's Don here from the board. Thank you for coming along and checking out this video. So in this video today, I'm going to be doing the unboxing and checking out the first look of the PCB I created for the big switch. Now, I did a very quick video before on the big switch when I first got it, my first impressions and so forth. And naturally following this at some point in time, I will actually put the PCB together, assuming it works and I don't have to do any modifications. Now, before we actually get into that, let's have a look at what I did in regards to creating it using KiCad. So let's switch that off and across. Now, I know other people have actually already done their own PCBs, but I haven't seen anyone post pictures of it and show it. I know that people have done big switch builds where they've put in lighting, LEDs and fancy glow and stuff like that, 3D printed boxes and so forth. But I don't know if anyone else has actually shown this or shared this. And this is my own footprint for the big switch. I had a pair of plastic calipers, I took measurements and essentially I tried to recreate it. So we'll find out if I did a good job or not very, very shortly. But once I had developed this footprint, I went ahead and then I made an actual PCB for it, which was this. And you can see, uh, you know, I slapped my logo on it, put my name and when I made it on the 5th of January, and I just hooked it up as a very simple one switch PCB using a Pro Micro, of course, and I've got some mount holes so that if you wanted to, you could do two layers and actually have it sitting off standoffs and so on and so forth. Pretty standard fare. Now, I suppose the advantage of this design, because it's very simple, it's just a single switch PCB, is that if I didn't get it right, you can still jump from the pins to different IO ports of the Pro Micro, and then you would just ignore the ones that it's actually wired to. So I actually don't know if it's going to be correct or not, but I just made the assumption that, you know, we would have one row, one column pin, and, and that would be it. So we'll find out at some point later on. Now, I only picked this up from the mailbox. Uh, well, sorry, actually, I had to go to a, a pickup point because DHL delivering to my unit's not very good, and I haven't opened it. So let's just switch over to the desktop, and there it is. There's the DHL package. You can see it's a very, very small box, and... You know, of course, I've been using um, all PCB lately. I've had pretty good experiences with them so far, both in the Fan V2, which came in a in a medium size box, the Fan V3, which came in a bigger size box, and now I've got the uh, Big Switch, which comes in a tiny, tiny box. So we'll we'll see what kind of range of packaging options uh, they actually come with, and of course, it's it's sealed. So uh, let's let's cut this baby open. Well, baby in the sense of uh, figurative, not literal. So I don't think my wife would appreciate if I decide to cut my baby open. All right, there's a tiny ass box. No paperwork inside, all well and good. So, uh, you know what? Not bad. It's actually the first box out of all three that has made it here without any noticeable damage to it. Um, good solid. Let's check it out. Bit of paperwork inside. So the first thing that I'm very happy about is unlike what had happened with my V3 is uh, I do have solder mask on this. Now the other day I did the video of the V3 and I ended up with plates that look like this, right? So they've actually got no solder mask so there's none of that green stuff on top and this is literally the ground plane. Through discussion and learning from other people in the community. It was because I was missing the front and back ground plane files in my Gerber, which resulted in then not doing that green PCB mask. So I did of course check that this one had it, even though they had already manufactured and shipped it by the time I received the V3. So I was pretty confident that it was all right. And there you go. We have, uh, we have green, we have green light. And it's nice and chunky. Just put the box aside. Um, let's just do a, a quick side count because I did order 10 and I don't know how many I'm going to get this time. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So no extras in this lot at all. Rightio, let's just get the knife. It looks pretty good so far. Um, I haven't been disappointed at all with their quality and obviously any mistakes that have happened so far have been due to me, not due to them. So I think I'll probably keep 
using them price wise you know they might be more expensive or cheaper but I haven't really bothered taking the time to compare them to, to other manufacturers and my experience so far has been relatively positive so whoa, that is that's neat very neat so let's just confirm one two three four five six seven eight nine ten so ten is ordered and uh, there we go that is that is my big switch PCB made by me and uh, we got some some through holes there in the big fat and then on the other side there's the trace pro micro and some two mil screws so here is the big switch and like I said on the podcast the other day um, always got to give it a couple of test clacks to make sure it works now it does actually sound different to the default because I have modded it but I'm not going to go too much into that and here comes the uh, the test here comes the test no I didn't get it right or did I I did not get it right oh okay so you can see the angle of that second pin means I did not get it right um, I got it horribly horribly wrong horribly horribly wrong so it seems like the hole I'm too high so the copper pins the right position but that position was too high hmm my reference markers were in the wrong spot now of course I can still wedge it down but uh, obviously it's not going to be very healthy for it and uh, now I have a whole bunch of PCBs that are no good so my footprint is wrong which is a bit sad but uh, let's just check out how the rest of that went on the outside so the white lines seem to be okay in terms of my my very simple measurement um, back to the drawing board it goes back to the drawing board it goes now thankfully at least that metal is relatively easy to bend um, so you know I can just straighten that out again I suppose the alternative for me is if I went and bent it and then bent it back at a 90 degree or something like that but uh, it's a little bit sad it's a little bit sad that said um, I'm, I'm pretty happy that the the actual copper pin is is positioned correctly so if I line up the the hole there you can sort of see the the copper pin goes through perfectly but I'm not sure or maybe is it because of the hole yeah okay so it's not that my pins are the wrong spot it's actually the hole for the center stem is incorrect it's incorrect now if I if I just do that lineup it seems they, they just slot in well but what's the issue here the issue here is that my stem it's not focusing there we go so see how it's off center that is what's causing it it's actually a little bit on the low side whereas the actual the actual switch holes are, are correct switch holes are correct now this does mean I can still fix this um, naturally of course you know I can't do much about these except to, to hand sand them back now this is silicon wafer so it will produce um, nasty dust so if you have to do something like this I would advise you to do it with uh, with appropriate protection mask and so forth and maybe a bit of wet and dry but what I can do is I can actually sand the edge of this because that's what it looks like is the problem it's I've got to go a bit more that way down and a little bit up and then it should be it should be fine it should be fine it's only because that it's pushing the the actual stem that way that's causing that bottom pin to have to bend okay a little bit disappointing um, but I love how these turned out in terms of their look their size um, you know the print is really great that said I'm actually really impressed because I said before on the silk screen for the v3 because the v3 ones also very small you could see all the fine detail in the actual keyboard of the logo and if this will focus and I can hold it steady enough you can see it actually 
still has the key switch, well not key switch, the, the key cap detail on the silk screen. It's just not as clean compared to when it's a little bit larger and you can see the individual lines in there. So there you go. So nice and short. Um, I guess I will have to do some sanding slash filing and maybe there'll be a part two to this video just to uh, see how that fit. If there is no part two, then there's no part two. And uh, I got a whole bunch of, shall I say, um, coasters or something like that. All right, well, if there's no part two, thanks for checking that video. And of course, uh, if there is a part two, we'll catch you on the other half. So until next time, happy clacking. All right, so we're back. Uh, it's taken me about 10 minutes or so, and I just used a very simple file and I just sanded it down. Well, filed it down really more than sanding it down. And it does work. It just takes a little bit of time, effort, a uh, little bit of care. And it looks like I took off about two millimeters in the direction that I had to go to make it fit. So first, this is the one that I, I actually sanded down, that I filed down. And you can kind of see there's a bit of a, a roughness happening around this bottom side here. And just to show you how much I actually did have to take, I'm just lining this up to the one underneath it. And you can kind of see that, yeah, it's about two mil or so. Um, just in that general direction down this way towards that uh, the this that fatter thicker silver pin of the big switch It wasn't terribly difficult to do It was just a little bit of effort because I had to do a little bit test the fit sand a bit more test the fit file a bit more test the fit um, and in regards to on the back side it didn't come anywhere near the trace so there was really no risk of it being damaged in that way at all and you can kind of see how much I had to take away from there as well. Now, I don't know how much interest this PCB would be to other people. Obviously, if I wanted to make this available, I would probably fix the footprint or I would, well, I would fix the footprint in that I'm not confident about moving just the hole simply because I'm still not 100% sure where the, cent where the center of the stem should be. But what I can do instead is I can just enlarge it. Now, noting that the actual stem going into this PCB hole isn't that necessary for stability because of the size of these pins. Unlike on a regular switch where the pins are tiny, the, the actual width and size, the thickness of the pins holds it quite well and it's flush. And once you actually solder the pins in, I wouldn't expect it to move very much anyway. But to prove and demonstrate the fact that my uh, filing, my rough filing actually does work. So before, I'll just see if it'll come and uh, focus on the table. So this is a good one, untouched. Uh, I was not able to get it all the way in. It just it just doesn't want to go, right? And then it'll start to push the pin. As you can see, it's starting to do there. So let's just uh, gently nudge the pin back. And now with the one that I've modified, I can just put it all the way in. So it does actually sit all the way in there. Now, the other thing is, it's not so easy to see here, but you'll see there's a bit of rotation happening there. It doesn't line up perfectly to the square. And that's also because of that switch center stem hole, but it does sit fairly close. Now, I would call this a, a fail to start with, a partial fail. It is fixable. And as you can see, you know, it does actually sit in there. And even though there's a lot of space on one side, it doesn't really go anywhere because once again, like I said, because these pins are so massive like you know there could be some movement but I wouldn't say it's it's deal breaking movement um, so if I hold it to the side you can see it sits and rests quite neatly on that it's it's very flush and I had actually designed it so that the prime marker would sit underneath and you'll see that there's there's heaps of uh, clearance for the header pins on you would put it underneath but then any points that you solder on this side shouldn't come in contact with the actual switch itself because it's got little bits of feet, which is great. And if you use 10 mil standoffs, 12 mil would be even better, but 10 mil standoffs is sufficient. The actual alignment of this, when you put another one with 10 mils on it, is just perfect enough that the tips of the switch shouldn't come all the way fully through. 
Now you do actually want them to be sort of just in there so that you can solder them down as well for extra strength. But this means once you put bump-ons onto it, otherwise you're gonna be resting on the screws, this will actually lift it completely off. And so ideally, uh, just getting that in, it'll sit kind of like that. Now, of course, this actually works for demo purposes because the stem doesn't go through the, the other PCB because obviously the hole's in the incorrect position, but it would sit and have a, a PCB base like so that you can't really see because the actual cap is on the way. So let's just take the cap off it, uh, drop that through, and it would rest and sit looking something like that. Now, of course, mine's not gonna be perfect because it's rotated because I've had to do the, uh, the MacGyver job on it, but if we were to go forward and, and make more of these with the whole, you know, probably, I'd say even three mil bigger, it would be more than enough to get the, the switch in. Please, of course, leave in the comments below what you think about this. Um, obviously, that's a bit of a fail on my behalf because I didn't take very good measurements. Um, but if it's something that interests you, by all means, let me know. I could even possibly, you know, send you, sell you one of these ones uh, if you're willing to, to do a bit of filing work yourself. Or I can modify the actual switch put footprint and redo this, etc., etc., etc. Now, what I didn't do at the start was of course, if this is the first time that you're actually seeing any of my PCB videos, um, I do want to say that, yes, I've had really interesting experiences so far, but all of the errors that I've had have all been my design errors rather than manufacturing errors. Now, I've not used any other service from start to finish for making PCBs, except for all PCBs. I did try another house, I hit some issues, and I haven't gone back. With all PCBs so far, it's been really great. I've had a really you know, smooth experience and the customer service factor has been fantastic as well. So I do wanna just show you, you can get your quotes very quickly, very easily. You can select your quantities, you can put in you know, 100 by 100 or whatever the size is that you want and it'll spit out, well, I think that was, okay, maximum 680, so there you go. Let's go for a, a huge 680 board. Doesn't want it, doesn't like it. Uh, no, didn't like, didn't like 680. So let's go 68. There we go. And then it just tells you, you know, what your shipping costs. Now you do have to remember, especially for all PCB, is that your PayPal costs, if you're paying with PayPal, is on top. Does not include PayPal costs. That's the only thing that I'm not terribly happy with it. Um, now they do have a referral program. Obviously, I will have links below if you're interested in joining up and giving them a try. Um, they do have a reward scheme, so obviously the more that you buy and manufacture with them, the more rewards that you'll get back. I haven't done very much, so my rewards level is like practically nil because the point cost is actually really, really high. But obviously, you know, if you're going to be doing stuff, you're going to run a group buy. The more you buy, the more points you can redeem it for maybe something useful. So there you have it. There is the uh, Big Switch PCB made by myself. Some things that have to be changed. But uh, let me know if you are interested and we can see if there's enough interest from this video for me to run an interest check to actually gauge what I would need to do to make this happen. All right, so thank you very much for checking out the video. Um, do appreciate it. I'm very sorry I wasn't able to straight off the bat produce something, you know, working and cool, but that's, uh, that's just how the way life is and, and that's part of learning designing, learning creation. And I don't know what I'll do in the future to try and avoid these kind of mistakes, but I must have and develop a better method of measuring center points and distances from edges and so on and so forth. So tricky one, tricky one. All righty I'm going to wrap it there. Thanks very much for checking out the video. Please hit like, please share. And of course, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, we would love and appreciate your subscription as well. And at 1200 subscribers, we're going to be doing a giveaway for the HIV-60 keyboard, the cheapest keyboard you can build by parts from Taobao with RGB underglow. Radio. Until next time, happy clacking.